Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how you can create awesome portrait photos with artistic light trails that look something like this. Normally for a shot like this you would need a pretty slow shutter speed and you would need some kind of RGB lights and move them around in order to record those light trails, but if you're shooting a subject like a person, it is pretty hard to have a subject to sit perfectly still for a couple of seconds, so basically what you need to do is you need to take two exposures, one with the subject with a fast shutter speed and then another one without the subject with the light trails with slow shutter speed. And today I'm going to show you how you can do this 100% in camera. That's right, most modern cameras have a feature called multiple exposure and I'm going to show you how you can use that in order to pull off such a photo. And if you don't have multiple exposure feature built in into your camera, don't worry, because by the end of the video I will also show you how you can do a similar thing in Adobe Photoshop. So let's Let's jump into this little head demonstration set that I have built for this video and let me show you how to do it. Alright, and here's this little set that I have built for the demonstration purposes for this video. As you can see, I have my camera that I will be shooting with. My subject right here is this lens. And then I have those two RGB lights on the sides that we will use to generate those light trays. And right here I have a Laowa 15mm ultra wide lens in order to have a relatively good composition with the short amount of space that I have right here on my table so you guys can actually see what is going on. So we are going to take two exposures, one with the light trace and another one with the subject and we are going to start with the image with the light trace because that way we will be able to position our subject in a way that won't collide with the streaks of light that we have produced. So for now we are going to take away the lens on the side and we are going to use the long exposure. So as you can see I have also right here an ND filter because this scene is lit with my key light and I don't want my key light to overwhelm the image that I will be taking with this camera. So that's why I have this ND so I can use a shutter speed of like 3-4 seconds and still have a perfectly black background with only those lights visible. So that's the idea behind the ND filter. Alright, so let's see what we got. So if you have a Canon camera you have to go into the menu and if you don't have the Canon camera you just have to refer to your manual but for canons you go to the menu and on the camera menu we go to the subheading 5 and then right here you have multiple exposure you want to hit ok here and then multiple exposure we are going to enable it you have two functions here I just got to use the first one then you have the multi exposure control you have four options to choose from additive average bright or dark for this purposes additive or bright is going to work best and I found out that additive is working best to my liking so I'm just gonna leave it at additive number of exposures you can increase that if you want minimum is two we are just going to use two so okay save source images if you set it to all images it is going to save all individual images so both of the original raw files and then the combined image which has two of them merged together in camera so I'm gonna use all images because those two individual images will be used later on when I show you the Photoshop method so all images and right here one shot only okay and right now you can actually select one of the previous images that you have already shot in your camera in order to stack a second exposure onto it this option is currently disabled I think this is because I'm using a fully manual lens without electronic coupling to the camera when I was using it with my other lens which is electronically coupled like this one this option was enabled so right now we are just going to go without it so okay and then you have to frame up your first image so we are just going to use an aperture of f32 so it is very very little light coming into the camera and shutter speed of like three seconds or something okay so I have a two seconds self timer so when I hit my shutter I have two seconds to take those lights and start generating those streaks of light so let's try to do it right now I'm gonna hit the shutter and then I'm going to move those lights like here to generate those streaks of light and then it is done. So as you can see the first exposure is currently done and right now I can take those out and as you can see you have this translucent overlay which is showing you what the previous exposure was looking like. So if I take my subject right here I can actually frame it up in a way so it doesn't collide with my streaks of light. So something like this would be good. I know it's barely visible right here. Maybe I can open up the ND. Oh that's the better. So right now you can actually see this subject, which is the camera in this case. 
I'm just going to position it something like this. So as you can see, it doesn't collide with those streaks of light on the sides. And then I'm going to hit the info a couple of times to get to this view. And right now I'm going to change the shutter speed. So I'm going to change it to like one of a 50 of a second, which just would be perfectly normal to shoot a person that is incapable of sitting completely still for a portrait shoot. And then I'm going to, of course, open up my aperture. And right now this looks like a pretty decent exposure. I'm going to light this subject with those same colorful lights. So yellow on this side and blue on this side. So it matches the streaks of light that we had from the previous exposure. So it looks natural on the final image. So something like this would be out of frame. So again, I'm going to hit the shutter and then in those two seconds, I'm going to pick those up and position it something like this in order to have this dual lighting on my subject. So uh, let's go. I'm going to press the shutter. And it is done. And right now it is combining those images. As you can see, you may hear the shutter going up or down or something like this in the camera. Give it a moment. And this is our final photo. If I go to preview, as you can see, this is how our final photo looks like. And it is done completely in camera. Those two images were combined. And if I go to the left right here, as you can see, this is the second individual exposure. And this is the first individual exposure. So we can take these two and actually blend them together in Photoshop. But this result to my eye looks pretty epic and it didn't require any paid software, any knowledge of how to post-process these images, blend them together in the computer. You can do it completely in camera. But of course, for the ultimate control, what you can do is you can actually take those two individual files into the computer, stick them into the single Photoshop document, put one on top of the other and then you're going to want to play with the blending modes of the layer that sits on the top. So the blending modes that will give you the desired effect are either lighten, screen, linear dodge, add or lighter color. I think that lighter and linear dodge works the best and right now of course you can manipulate those layers to your liking. For instance, if you want to make the subject a little bit bigger, you can do that by using the transform tool and let's make it a little bit bigger. As you can see it now overlays to the light streaks on the sides and right now we can use something like a masking tool inside Photoshop in order to mask out those areas that you don't want in the final blend. And that's how you can produce an image like this using Adobe Photoshop. So that's basically it for me for this video. As you can see, you can do it 100% in camera if you have the multi exposure feature built in. Otherwise, you can do it in Adobe Photoshop and achieve the same awesome result. If you found this video helpful, please leave a thumbs up down below. I would really appreciate that. And right now, if you want to check out more photography tips and tricks from me, you can check out these two videos. And also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I'm posting new videos pretty much every single week. So it's definitely worth subscribing. And see you in one of those videos. Bye bye.